Hello everyone and welcome to our online lecture series. Today we shall study another chapter from our English textbook that is Alchemy of Nature. It's one of the most shortest chapter, one of the most uh, fantastic chapter. Uh, it's one of my favorite chapter because there is so much from this chapter to learn. If you listen to the words in this chapter, if you carefully put them in your mind, you will understand that this chapter will inspire you in your tough times as well. The title is quite interesting. Let us come to the discussion right away. Alchemy of nature. Alchemy in a sense means magic. So nature around us is very magical. You can see uh, how the author has tried to explain this point with uh, various examples in the text. All right. So this magic of uh, nature, so, so as to say, with respect to the title is being explained in this chapter. All right, let us uh, move forward. Let us carry on. So the chapter begins with a quote by William Blake. William Blake is one of the most uh, fantastic, most famous uh, British, uh, British poets. And uh, he belongs to the era where poetry about nature used to be written. So uh, alchemy of nature starts with a quote of nature. Let me read it. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. So this quote by William Blake sets the tone. It's one of the most fantastic. The meaning is explained right here. What is he trying to say? Something as tiny as a grain of sand can spark off an idea or imagination of a huge significance to the world. Right. We also know that a tiny particle of sand can become a pearl, which is very expensive. So he says that even the smallest part in nature has to be respected. One can witness and experience the beauty of heaven in something as small as a wild flower. So when you are traveling, you can see those flowers going, uh, growing across the street, right? Uh, on both the sides, you can see nobody, pl nobody plants them, nobody... Uh, puts water to them but still they grow in their majesty in all their beauty right so he's saying that uh, some people can derive the beauty of heaven just by looking at a small flower wild flower only one should have the eyes and time to see it this is very important right if you are sad then you'll see sadness around the world if you are happy you see happiness around the world infinity is endless space so it's a space which uh, is across the universe and it's endless but your small palm can hold the destiny of earth through your efforts you can change through your efforts you know the the journey that's how the great people have done it eternity is endless it's endless time but just an hour in your life can make a difference to the world forever right so this justifies the quote, great deeds can surpass the limits of time and space. They never die. Whatever Mahatma Gandhi did, whatever Mother Teresa did, whatever Malala Yousafzai has done, whatever Kaila Satyarthi has done, is going to come in the next chapters. Nobody is going to forget in this world, right? So the chapter starts with this fantastic quote, uh, which sets the tone actually for the chapter. Uh, the beginning is set and now let us try to see what the author is trying to explain us by saying the alchemy of nature. What is the magic of nature? Let us find out quickly. We instinctively turn to outdoor activities and nature as a way of relaxing and enhancing our well-being. Nature suits and nurtures. Suits means to make us calm. Nurture means to help us grow. Nature fulfills and motivates. Nature whispers and commands. So the chapter starts with this fantastic para where they are saying that we always go outdoors to the picnics, uh, to uh, treks, to some beautiful sunrises that we see or a short ride that we take to village. And we, we feel nature, we absorb nature in us and it leads to our enhancement and well-being. Are you listening? Now, this is not uh, a question mark, you know, it's a question mark to you. Are you listening? What are you listening to? Are you listening to nature? Not me in lecture, but nature, right? Are you listening to the nature? The nature is trying to give you some hints. It is trying to give you some examples. Are you listening to it? 
when i do when i listen to nature it leaves me in complete awe awe means wonder or amazement we have a hibiscus plant in our garden hibiscus means jaswan which we call no? in marathi jaswan every fourth night a flower blooms on it big bright and tender through the day it smiles with the sun and dances with the wind but as evening approaches it starts wilting wilting means to dry out or to die or to wither the morning after it withers completely and by evening it falls and becomes one with the earth again the flower comes to life only for a day yet it does so in full splendor it does it all with its energy what if we too lived our life however short to its fullest we human beings make a mistake of uh, thinking that we are going to live forever and that is why they don't do they don't take today seriously so by looking at the hibiscus flower what did the author say she is trying to tell us that itna sa chhota sa hibiscus ka flower it has life span of only 24 hours but it does not say ki yaar kya 24 ghante baad tumhe marne wala ho to why to blossom why to bring happiness on somebody else's life when i am going to die anyways no it does that with full splendor it does that with all its happiness and majesty so you learn from something as small as hibiscus flower that you need to live every day to its fullest you need to work to your maximum potentials you know whatever your potential is if you work on that you will achieve every damn thing in the life next example when we went to a rocky beach and saw the spread of the majestic ocean and the rocks along alongside carved sculpted and shaped by water water is so gentle rock so hard yet as the water flows over it every day for years the rocks give in it takes a shape that the water commands our problems are so big colossal means big and we are so small yet if we persist now what do we learn from this see continuously when the waves hit the shores sometimes the rocks take the shape of the uh, shape that the water is commanding them continuously pressure is created by the waves and the rock has to give in you can see some uh, rocket platforms or you can see certain uh, geographical structures that have happened uh, the famous beach of hariharishwar you can see it there also that certain structures have formed because water has been hitting the shore for years and years so what is the hidden message over here what is the hidden message that in front of rock water is so weak but when water persist means continuously it gives efforts it dictates the rock it commands the rock it takes control of the rock and it changes its shape to whatever it wants to all right so we learn that from water that no matter how big our problems but if we persist we can overcome them so the three dots are given them is that it's a continued statement that if we have consistent efforts we can achieve anything in life it's re- it reminds me of a story of a king who was hiding uh, who was running from uh, the opponent's army and hiding in a cave and he saw a spider you know climbing 10 times it used to fall down it to climb again it used to fall down climb again finally it reached and then the king got up and he said you know if uh, the spider can do it i can do it too and he went on and won the battle so uh, it should we should be persistent just like the the elements in nature are you know sun comes on its time each day every day moon comes on its time each and every night so look at the cycle how disciplined nature is and from these elements we have to learn moving on we saw small bits of grass peeping through the small cracks in a concrete pavement so sometimes you see that right nobody waters but still it grows it left us thinking however impossible things may look there is always an opening there is always an opportunity you know in the worst case scenarios also people do the best they don't complain of their situations losers always keep on complaining i don't have my parents didn't give me i don't have the house i want i don't have the money i want i don't have the job i need i don't have the career these are all complaints and who complain people who are losers complain who takes responsibility someone who is powerful takes responsibility 
yes i am responsible for my life whatever i do i will bear its consequences so look at the tiny bits of grass you know on the corner of the road on the pavement pavement matlab marathi tapan tala paivat manto footpath so you can see grass is growing from there impossible you know concrete uh, people will say concrete mein kya hota but still they find uh, a way and they grow so what do we learn from there we learn that however impossible things may look in the beginning there is always a road now there are couple of examples which are discussed here we saw a tree bare of all leaves in the cold winter month we thought its chapter was over it's dead but the but 3 months passed spring set in and the tree was back to its green majesty once again full of leaves flowers birds and life what if we too had the conviction that however difficult things are right now it will not remain so forever remember this too shall pass now this line uh, i remember i had this chapter in my 10th standard also and this line has been with me forever this too shall pass what do you mean by this that today no matter how wor- worst situation you are stuck in it's not like that that this situation would be there forever right how did the author find out this by looking at a tree when it bared its all its leaves nothing on the tree you know it was dead still lifeless not in motion at all not a single leaf moving so we thought that the tree is dead but no 3 months spring came in और हिंदी में उसको कहते हैं हम बाजी पलटना एवरीथिंग चेंज अपसाइड डाउन व्हाई बिकॉज डीप इनसाइड द ट्री डेंट डाय फॉर इट्स सर्वाइवल इट हैड लेफ्ट द लीव्स इट वाज स्टैंडिंग अलोन एंड इट न्यू दैट वंस स्प्रिंग विल कम इन स्लोली स्टेडीली द फ्लावर्स विल बिकम बिगिन टू ब्लूम सो व्हाट डू वी लर्न वी लर्न दैट सिचुएशंस आर टेंपरेरी वी आर परमानेंट सिचुएशंस आर टेंपरेरी and remember this to shall pass no bad time stays forever it will go on we saw an army of ants lugging a fly which was at least 10 times the ant size the ants organized themselves around the fly lifted it on frail fillers frail frail means uh, nazuk fillers means their hands and carried it to the quite a distance their team work and perseverance perseverance means the act of not quitting were impressive what if we too are consistent organized focused we can achieve what the ants could do i have read a fact about ants that ants can pick up 50 times their weight so for example if my weight is 50 multiplied by 50 can i pick up uh, that big no i would die rather right by picking it up so ants can do that and we thought that eh choti si mungi kya kar sakta but no nature has made it powerful in its own way and what did the author learn from this look she learned that if we are organized if we work with a team if we put hard efforts together in one direction we can go there we can achieve it right with a team with a uh, alone you can run but with the team you know you can walk long distance spider webs are delicate yet very strong a rainbow colors the entire sky oysters take a, in a grain of sand and they open up with a pearl innumerable stars shine across the infinite sky clouds take new shapes with every passing moment the wind makes trees dance with unhindered passion water without tint of ego changes its form according to the dictates of the sun and the wind when we see a caterpillar turn into a butterfly a flower turn into a fruit we experience the beauty of nature we touch it and we become gold ourselves so in the last paragraph she discusses n number of things she discusses spider webs rainbows stars clouds water hmm? then um, caterpillar turning into the butterfly flower turning into the fruit so when we discuss when we uh, look at these uh, things in nature it's then we find the alchemy the alchemy means power of magic Uh, that changes us so there is so much to learn from the nature around us and what is the author trying to tell us that please open your eyes and look learn study what is there around you right 
and there are so many things we need to learn from nature and somebody who learns from the nature never fails in life understand this all right i hope you have understood the chapter uh, you know already for homework you have to do the english workshop attempt the question answers they are very easy if you don't know anything if you find some lines difficult please ask me in the comment sections or directly in the group itself thank you so much